How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring you along with me to discuss the similarities and differences between the Sony a7 III and the Sony a7R III when it comes down to photography and video to see if it helps you decide which camera is best for you. So let's jump right into it. So the, the best question that I always ask myself is what do I want to do with the camera? Do I want to be focused more on still photography? Do I want to do more video oriented? Or do I want to do a hybrid between video and photo relatively equally so that I can decide which camera would have the best impact for what I want to use it for? So we're going to go ahead and compare the specs between both cameras just to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of both cameras before we do some rigorous testing to see which camera kind of puts out the best files and just best product itself for your needs um, so that way you can see which camera you want to go with. So first things first we're going to talk about the Sony a7 III. The Sony a7 III comes in right now at $19.99. Sometimes it's on sale for $17.99. It just depends on the season and what's going on with Sony and basically the holidays and everything like that. I got mine for $17.99 whenever it was on sale so you might be able to get lucky and get it as well new for that price. The camera is a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. It shoots 4k 24 frames per second 30 frames per second and it shoots slow-mo in 1080p for 60 frames and 120 frames per second for the slow motion buttery smoothness it has dual memory card slot that way you can have like a backup if you want to do it that way or just have more memory it's up to you and it has the five um, axis body in body stabilization the steady shot that they have for good old um, Sony I guess um, the other thing that I want to talk about is the battery size. It is the bigger than the A6000 series and the A7R2 as well. So that's one of the reasons why I'm comparing the A7 III to the A7R3 because they're the same battery size and the specs are the same. Not so much the price one completely because the A7R2 is a little bit closer to the A7 III, but that's why I decided to do this comparison that way, just in case people were saying, oh, the price is going to be too different. So it is a 24 megapixel sensor, so that way it's really good supposedly for low light light situations when it comes down to video because it, it, it gives a good middle ground for it so once you see the testing you can see for yourself which one would be better if the 24 megapixels is good enough for low light or is it not good enough because I know the a7s3 only has 12 which is a beast when it comes down to low light situations. Now onto the Sony a7R3. The price starts at $27.99. Some places you can get them a little bit cheaper. Like I said, it all depends on the season and the situation that Sony wants to throw in some rebates for you. It is also a full frame camera, 35 millimeter sensor. So basically they're pretty much equal in that aspect. The only difference really is that it shoots 42 megapixels with the photography in the raw format. It does have uh, 4K, 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second as well as the 1080 60 to 120 frames per second for the slow motion the only thing that i want to let you know is it does have a crop in factor when shooting a video but you can take it off so it doesn't do that full-on crop mode so it's almost like basically the same thing so it just depends what you want to do with it but that does affect apparently like the low light situations because more megapixels so just an fyi it also has a dual memory card slot for the extra memory or as well for backup it does have the five axis body steady shot in body stabilization that the sony cameras have it does have the bigger battery like i said just the way the same way that the sony a7 III has so that's the similarities of both cameras the one different thing is that with the sony a7 III and the sony a7 r3 when it comes down to continuous shooting you can do more of that kind of spraying and praying with the sony a7 III versus the r3 because of the file size differences i believe that this one shoots about 10 frames per second 89 frames in the raw format and it does 76 in the raw format so it's a little bit of a difference but nothing too crazy it's just obviously the file sizes are bigger when it comes down to the sony a7r3 so now that we've covered the specs since that's basically something you can kind of read over on the camera sides whenever you're looking at the cameras that's not the biggest issue when it comes down to choosing the camera it's seeing it in action we're going to go off and do the testing now over here and do a little bit of photo and daylight low light situation as well as video comparison for daylight and low light situations just to kind of show you the quality and how well it holds and then show you some other stuff with the file sizes and everything like that and the computer so let's go so now we're gonna do the autofocus test first uh, this is how I'm gonna set it up so you guys can see it a little bit more live just because it'll make more sense it might be easier so here is the setup 
that's basically my phone attached to the good old tripod and that is the Sony a7 III that we'll be using for this test. And since I don't have anybody else here to take the photos for me or with me, I'm just gonna kind of hold down the shutter so that it shows the eye focus and uh, auto focus basically on my face. And I'm also gonna do it without just so that it registers my face and see how well it does, just to see how it does. Usually I use my phone to obviously take the photos, but right now I'm using it for a backup camera. So we're just gonna use the same method for both and see how it turns out. So I'm holding down the shutter just to kind of see how the eye autofocus tracks with the Sony a7R 3 and then letting it go to see how well it recognizes the face just moving around the frame. That way you kind of see a little bit of a live feed of how it works instead of just kind of just taking a photo. I think this shows a really cool kind of little test to see how well the eye autofocus is for tracking. And the Sony a7 III, it does the same thing. I mean, I think they're fairly pretty much close to the same. Uh, I know, I think the Sony a7R 3 has a little bit more focus points added to it, but at the same time, I feel like they both do a great job with the tracking and the eye autofocus tracking, so it's pretty great to see how well it works. So now we have a little bit of just taking a little bit of a photo, kind of having it set itself, and that's pretty much it, just doing that, and then I'll show you the photos later. Here we have a bit of video showing you the comparison of how well it tracks your face and how well it might not. Just to show you kind of what it does in live setting, just to see how well it works when you're videoing yourself or videoing someone. Sometimes it goes in and out of focus and I think it's more the lens than the camera itself, but just wanted to show you a little bit of a live tracking kind of video just using the camera, which I'll show you another video as well for the other camera and then I'll show you which one is which so that way you can see if you got a guess right and see which one was the right or better choice. So did the same thing, just kind of stood there, turned around, got up close just to show how well it would just track my face and get focused on it. Sometimes it's a little bit slower, sometimes it's a little bit faster, sometimes it doesn't recognize it just because of the lens, not so much the camera. That's a little bit of a disclaimer. But in all honesty, I think they're pretty much similar when it comes down to the autofocus and the face tracking. So it's all up to you what you think is best of which one of these cameras worked better with the focus point. So that's just what it is when it comes down to this test. So here we have the side by side. This is the Sony a7R 3 on the left and the Sony a7 III on the right. That way you can see kind of how they did side to side and the autofocus tracking. I think the Sony a7 III was a little bit better and faster with the tracking for the autofocus just from reviewing these videos comparisons since I pretty much did the exact same thing with both videos. That way you can kind of see yourself which one looks better and which one was faster with the autofocus tracking when it comes down to just the video aspect of these cameras. Hopefully this will help you understand the autofocus tracking for both cameras to see which one would be best for you. Here we have the touch focus control, basically just kind of touching for it to focus on with the Sony a7 III. It's pretty fast, pretty reliable. It seems like it was pretty good in my opinion, just kind of going back and forth from the camera to the background itself. Now with the Sony a7 R3, I did the exact same thing, did the test, kind of pretty much similar in my opinion. They weren't really that much different. The Sony a7 III had a little bit of an edge in my opinion, because I noticed that the Sony R3, a7 R3 was a little bit slower sometimes. We're gonna do a little bit of low light basically test here in my room just because it's now getting a little bit darker so i think it would be kind of cool to do a test where i do with this little light over here um just kind of see how it'll look with just that poorly lit kind of thing i'm going to turn off the main light and then i'm going to do one without with both cameras at from 4k 24 frames per second just to see how it goes and see if you can see how much noise either one creates more than the other or if it's not really that noticeable just to kind of put it to the test that way. So Sony a7 III up first. So here we have the Sony a7 III at ISO 4000. I kept the settings in both cameras the same all the way down to the white balance for obvious reasons for the comparison's sake. I did notice that the white balance in the Sony a7 R3 was a little bit off, so I kind of had to manually adjust it as best as I could to kind of compare them the same. Even though they were at the same 
everything. It just kind of was different. I don't know why, but just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on that just so that you know. And here we have them side by side so you can see the quality of the video beside each other. I think the Sony a7 III retained better information. It just looks a lot crispier and smoother, more professional footage to be able to use for video capabilities, especially because of the lower megapixel count. And here we have the Sony a7 III with ISO 8000 just to see how well it would retain the information and how grainy it would be or not usable footage as it could be. And here is the Sony a7 R3. I think the best part about this test is just how much my dog is enjoying the pets that I had to do for comparison. But I'm going to show you the video side by side now so you can see what I mean. I think the Sony a7 III just retained better information overall. It's just a better low light camera in my opinion. The lower megapixel count really does help it out a lot. Alright, so now I'm going to turn off this light and then do a, uh, another comparison of the low light capabilities with basically no light in this room. I might leave the light back there from the bathroom on just to see um, how it looks, but I'll let you guys know for sure if I do that or not. I decided to try to push the ISO to 32,000 to see how well it would retain the information for both cameras to see if it could be even usable footage. In all honesty, they both kind of look like trash, but the one that handled itself better was the Sony a7 III when it came down to the quality control, and I wanted to show you that side by side. I decided to push my Sony a7 III to ISO 102,400 just to see what it would look like. I mean, it looks like crap, but it's still kind of cool to see the tests that I can make with it. So yeah, I decided to keep that light on from the bathroom on and then I also did basically where I turn on another little lamp farther out just to do a little bit of base of ISO differently for um, to not do too extreme where it's like almost unusable footage where it'll be something more realistic of what you would use it for just to kind of compare it to see how it would look and basically what I, I'm comparing the ISO on is for the footage to be used for using it on somebody so since most people would try to vlog or something to see how well it can retain information on the face and sharpness and quality overall between the ISO's comparisons. I think the one who enjoyed the most uh, of this uh, comparison test was my dog because just uh, he really enjoyed all the pets that I was getting him every time I went to go sit down and set up the camera and everything like that. He was just uh, super happy with the pets. So A plus for him for being a good helper. And yeah, so hopefully you're liking this test so far. And if you are, make sure to, you know, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, but I do appreciate you watching this far along the video. It really means a lot. So now we're going to go move on and import everything onto the computer so I can start looking at the quality comparison, seeing the file sizes and everything like that to give you a little more perspective in that end. All right, so we're going to jump into my computer now to kind of just show you a little bit of comparisons of the photos with the file sizes and everything like that, just to see which is bigger or if they're about similar, especially when it comes down to the photos, because obviously the megapixels is going to be different in sizes. So I kind of already know that, but I'm going to show you anyway on the computer. So we're going to go straight to it. All right, so here we have both photos. It's not the most flattering photo of myself because, well, I just wanted to take a photo, so uh, just ignore that fact. But anyways, here are the both photos. Kind of put them as a reference. I try to get them as close as possible to each other and edit. I forgot I had the auto Y balance on the photo part, so it kind of just did as best as I could right now. So yeah, we're gonna go with that. And um, just wanted to do a little bit of zooming in. Um, I think this is at 100%. Um, there you go. So that's why the one on the left is the one of the a7 R3 and the a7 III is the one on the right. That's why it's more punched in on the left because of the more megapixels. Um, and then, yeah, not as much over here on the a7 III. So that's a, a thing about the megapixels. So shows you a little bit of, um, what each camera and quality can do. Um, a lot of my photos on Instagram, if you don't follow me, is at Easy Tiger Creative. I have a lot of photo examples that I take with the a7 III and the a7 R3. So if you want to find out more about it, then that's a pretty good place to just scope to see how the photos look. And you're always welcome to just leave me a comment down below and I can give you more information on it or on Instagram as well. Um, so I'm going to pull up the files right here. So this is the a7 r3 file. So I'm going to go to the properties. So it's an 82 megabit uh, Size of file 
versus the Sony a7 III size is 48 megabits. So that's a pretty big chunk of change when it comes down to the differences in sizes of the raw files. So keep that in mind when it comes down to the amount of storage you're gonna be using. I mean, I have a five terabyte external hard drive and I'm already like filling it up all the time, making all the photos and content that I make. So just keep that in mind when, it, when deciding what you would like best as well when it comes down to those um, photos. So I'm gonna check out the videos real quick now that I'm already here and see the sizing of them. This should be relatively the same kind of uh, size in the sense of uh, the megabits uh, for recording because it goes with a 4k does 100 megabits um, the, for the recording and then for the 1080 it's 50 I believe so uh, they're both pretty much the same on that I mean they're not gonna be the exact same file sizes right now because the length of the videos are different but it's relatively close enough but I just wanted to show you that just uh, in case you were curious about that so going back to the photos real quick I just wanted to kind of touch base a little bit on some stuff um, Basically, they're both pretty similar when it comes down to the editing style like you you'll notice that it's just um, The quality itself. They're both kind of picked up the same thing. They're the same settings I shot them both at ISO 800 uh, with my 35 millimeter at f2 and uh, 1 over 250s of a second for the shutter speed so they're fairly similar, so that's just pretty much what it is, and I just wanted to show that comparison. So I shot both of these photos the same thing with ISO 800, my 35 millimeter f2.8 at 1 over 250th of a second for the shutter speed. They're pretty much similar with every detail in my opinion. The only difference really is uh, the zoom in, it's just going to be, you get more megapixels on the other one. The only difference on the colors right now is going to be because I had it on auto white balance, so don't think it's because one camera or sensor or something like that they're really pretty much the same I can promise you that I've never had a difference in anything when it comes down to taking photos with these cameras so it's just more about just recovery of detail and everything like that because I can show you the before to the after right there so that's how much I blew out the highlights just to kind of show a little bit of the recovery of uh, information the same thing with the other photo that's just to show you pretty much the same so yeah, just want to let you guys know on that end on the photo spectrum of the comparison of the files between these two cameras. Here are both the photos that I took for the low light kind of comparison in my living room. The lighting obviously wasn't ideal. That's what the whole point of this whole test was. This is a Sony a7R 3 This is a Sony a7 III. I'm just going to punch in both of them just to show you what they look like in grain. I feel like the Sony a7 III retain a little bit more information just because probably the lower me megapixel count makes it become a lot better for that reason because it is supposed to be better for low light. Um, that's, I mean, it's more punched in on the Sony a7 R3 because of the more megapixel count. But other, other than that, I mean, this is the before, after I a little bit of noise reduction just to not overdo it or you lose too much detail. But that's just the comparison between both of these photos that I shot at ISO 6400. 125th of a second for the shutter speed so this one was increased to 10,000 iso and then the shutter speed one over 200th of a second just to kind of like pretend like i was trying to freeze a little bit more of time in the photo since you want to higher shutter speed to freeze more time the sometimes uh, i mean i've shot at like 6400 iso before with like 400 of uh, a shutter speed and i can bring back the information still so sometimes it doesn't really matter but that's just them both punched in like i said i feel like there's more definition right about this area compared to this one you can see the ears are a little bit better in the, in the like kind of like focus and sharpness with the low light so that's just a kind of little quick comparison that i want to do for the photo aspect if you want to see more photos that have low light obviously my instagram at easy tie creative i have a lot of photos there so if you ever have any questions send me a dm and i'd be happy to answer them and see how i can help out so basically that's just a little bit of the comparison of the cameras you've seen the video capabilities the photo the low light daylight and everything in between and obviously the specs between these two cameras so hopefully this will help you understand what would be work best for you so the ultimate question is which one checks more of your checklist 
and checks off those boxes that you have made for what would cater best to your needs. That's what's going to make the best camera for you. Doesn't even have to be any of these cameras, but I just wanted to show the comparison between these cameras in case you are a Sony shooter or want to shoot Sony. It would help you decide a little bit more on what would be best for your capabilities and what you're going to be using these cameras for to see which one would be best for your budget and also for just comparison. So like I said, if you want to do more still photography and you have the budget, the Sony a7R 3 is a phenomenal camera. The reason why I didn't even go with the a7R 4 just because of the price point didn't make sense. More megapixels didn't really matter for having 61 megapixels to 42. 42 is more than enough. So if you're wanting to do more stills, that is the camera to go with. In all honesty, it's very quick, very great. I, I advise people to get the Sony a7R 3 over the a7R 2 because of the battery sizes and how much faster it is. But in in reality, it's still a good camera to ju just go with a Sony a7R 3 if you're doing photos. And some video doesn't hurt. I mean, it has really good video capabilities, like I said. It's just a phenomenal camera all around. If you want to be more of a hybrid shooter, obviously the Sony a7 III has a little bit more punch when it comes down to the video aspect. So that might be the better camera if you want to do more heavy oriented into the video department and or a big hybrid kind of shooter where you want to shoot photos and videos relatively equally that you're going to be using it for your vlogs or your travel videos and then also photos while you're doing those travels. That would be a good scenario to have that camera. Another thing is don't let the megapixels kind of influence you that it's going to make it better, that it's going to be a lot better. In reality, both cameras are phenomenal and 24 megapixels is more than enough. So don't overthink it when it comes down to the megapixels. That's just something that I want to make clear because not always does it mean that it's going to be a better camera just because it has a higher megapixel count. It all depends on what you want to use it for. So that's what you need to think about in this moment when deciding about which camera to use. And lastly, it all comes down to the price point. How much are you willing to invest in your gear? If you're wanting to get more of a stills photography camera, the Sony a7R 3 is a great camera to go with if you're wanting that extra megapixels for the photography side of the things of, that comes onto this camera. Obviously the Sony a7 III is a great camera still for stills photography and video. So if you're looking for a mix of that, just kind of see what checks more of the box and how much are you willing to invest. Something that I really do advise though is if you're eventually wanting to upgrade to the Sony a7 R3 and you're just only going with a Sony a7 III because of the price point, I would suggest that you just save up a little bit more and invest into it fully so you don't have to go with the mix of having to sell gear later on or having to figure out how to get the gear and everything like that. Another good point about the Sony a7 III since it is a lower price, you can also invest into that body and get really good lenses for it. So that's a really good take for it if you're wanting to get more lenses, if you're not just wanting to have one lens. Since the Sony lines really do have great third party lenses with the Sigma and the Tamron lenses. So just take that into consideration when it comes down to these cameras and see the price point difference and see which one would best work with your budget. But with all that said and done guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, share this video with a friend and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.